Welcome to Lesson 11a, Exact Solutions of the Navier-Stokes Equation. In this lesson, we'll quickly review the procedure for solving fluid flow problems using differential analysis. Then I'll do a detailed example problem to illustrate this step-by-step -step procedure. First, a review of the procedure that we set up previously. Step 1 is to identify the flow geometry and domain. Step 2 is to list assumptions, approximations, and boundary conditions. Step 3 is to list all the appropriate differential equations and unknowns and simplify them as much as possible. Step 4 is to solve the equations. Step 5 is to apply the boundary conditions. As I mentioned, we often do these together. Step 6 is to verify the results. And step 7 is to calculate other properties of interest. I'll carefully walk you through this simple example. We're given steady, incompressible, fully developed laminar flow in the xy plane between two infinite plates. The bottom plate is fixed, but the top plate is moving at speed v. We want to calculate the velocity field. I'll solve this problem using the step-by-step -step procedure outlined above. The first step is to identify the flow geometry and domain. If you look at the sketch, we've kind of already done that. The domain is infinite in the z direction, which is out of the page in this geometry. It's also infinite in the x direction. The height between the two plates is h. Step 2 is to list assumptions, approximations, and boundary conditions. I numbered and typed these up. The flow is steady, which means del del t of anything is 0. The flow is 2d in the xy plane, which means del del z of anything is 0. And there's no w component of velocity. Gravity effects are negligible or ignored. You could have gravity in the z direction or minus z direction, but that would not affect the problem that we're doing here. Number four, the flow is fully developed, which means del del x of any velocity is zero. In other words, velocity components do not change with x. And five, the pressure is constant everywhere. Now we list the boundary conditions. At y equals zero, both u and v components of velocity must equal zero. This is the no-slip condition at the bottom wall. And at y equal h, u equal v, and little v equals zero. Again, there's no slip at the upper wall. Now we can list all appropriate differential equations and unknowns and simplify them as we go. I start with continuity. In Cartesian coordinates, we have this equation. To simplify, I cross off terms. And under the term I cross off, I put the number of the assumption and approximation. For example, approximation 4 is that the flow is fully developed. So del del x of any velocity is 0. So I put a 4 here. The 2d approximation is number 2. So I cross that term out as well. So continuity reduces to del v del y equals 0. I'll call that equation 1. Now let's look at x momentum, the x component of the Navier-Stokes equation. I write out the left-hand side, which equals the pressure term, plus the gravity term, plus the viscous term. Again, I simplify. The flow is steady. Velocities don't change with x. It's 2d. Pressure is constant. There's no gravity effects in this problem. u does not vary with x, and it's 2d. So this equation reduces to rho v del u del y equal mu del squared u del y squared. I'll call that equation 2. I note here that if del u del x is 0, then del squared u del x squared has to also be 0, since the derivative of 0 is 0. We do the same with the y momentum equation. I write out all the terms, cross off the unsteady term, Cross off this term because it's fully developed. This term is 0. By continuity, if we scroll up, we see equation 1, which told us that del v del y is 0. So my reason for crossing off this term is the continuity equation. 2d, pressure's constant. We're ignoring gravity. No changes in x. Continuity again. Again, if del v del y is 0, then certainly del squared v del y squared must also be 0. And 2d. So this equation simplifies to 0 equals 0, so it's exactly satisfied. The z-momentum also gives 0 equals 0 when we apply all of our assumptions and approximations. Now we're ready to solve or integrate these equations. I'll do step 4 and step 5 together, in other words, simultaneously. Equation 1 was del v del y equals 0, which we integrate, remembering to add a function of the other variable, since this is a partial integration. But we know by assumption and approximation 4 that del del x of any velocity component is 0. That is, v is not a function of x, nor is u. 
So the only way v can be a function of x from this equation, while not being a function of x, is that v is a constant. As I said, I'll do step 5 simultaneously. We apply a boundary condition at y equals 0, v equals 0. And since v is a constant, that constant must be 0. So v equals 0 everywhere in this flow field. Now let's look at equation 2. We had rho v del u del y equal mu del squared u del y squared. But now we know that v equals 0 from above. So del squared u del y squared equals 0. But u is not a function of x by assumption 4. u is not a function of time by assumption 1. And u is not a function of z by assumption 2. So u must be u of y only. So this equation, which I'll call 3, becomes d squared u dy squared equals 0. I'll call this equation 4. The difference is that here we used partial derivatives. Here we have total derivatives, since u is a function of y only. Now we integrate twice, since it's second order. The first time we get du dy is some constant. I'll call it c1. Then the second time we integrate, we get u equals c1y plus another constant, which I'll call c2. We apply the boundary conditions at y equals 0, u equals 0. So this equation becomes 0 equals 0 plus c2, or c2 equals 0. Our other boundary condition is that at y equal h, u equal v. So v equals c1h plus 0 since c2 is 0, which gives us c1 equal v over h. Thus we have our final expression for the velocity component in the x direction, u equal v times y over h. You may recall that we used this equation in a previous lesson, and I promised I would show you where this came from. Well, here it is. Step six is to verify the results. For example, make sure we satisfy all the equations and boundary conditions. You can verify the equations yourself. I'll just look at the boundary conditions. At y equals zero, u equals zero, and v equals zero. That's true from here. And we showed previously that v was zero everywhere. And then the second boundary condition when you plug in y equal h, we get u equal v. So this one is also satisfied. If you want to write out the vector form of the final answer, it's v vector equal v y over h, unit vector i plus 0, unit vector j. We sketch the velocity profile, and we see that it's linear from 0 at the lower wall to capital V at the top wall. We call this Couette flow. Finally, step 7 is to calculate other properties of interest. I'll look at the stress tensor. Recall from a previous lesson, the stress tensor is a second order tensor with nine components. This first part is called the pressure stress tensor. As you can see, it has only normal components. The second part is often called tau ij, which is the viscous stress tensor, or it's also called the deviatoric stress tensor. It represents the part of the stress tensor due to viscosity and does not contain pressure, but it does have both normal and shear stresses. Let's simplify this for our problem, where u equals vy over h, v equals 0, and w equals 0. I'll cross off all the terms that go away. u is not a function of x. v is 0, so all terms with v go away. w is 0, so all terms with w go away. u is not a function of z, so those two terms go away. So we're left with the pressure terms, and here pressure is a constant. And then the only terms remaining in the deviatoric stress tensor are these two off diagonals mu du dy, where again I've changed to total derivatives since u is a function only of y. I scroll up to this figure which shows the stresses on these three surfaces. On the other three surfaces they're equal and opposite. The only non-zero components here are sigma yx and sigma xy. This is sigma xy and this is sigma yx. They're the same since this is a symmetric tensor. Since this is a 2D problem, we draw our fluid element in the xy plane, and our deviatoric stress there is tau yx on the top surface, tau xy on the right surface, and then equal and opposite stresses on the opposite faces. Pressure also acts uniformly at all four faces. For this simple problem, we call this tau. So tau equal mu du dy. We've already done examples where we have this moving wall and stationary wall with our linear velocity field, and we calculated the shear stress at the wall, tau w, which is a constant. Since du dy is constant, it's a constant slope. Thus, we can calculate how much force we need to push this wall 
per unit depth and for a certain length, which we've done before. This was a very simple problem, but we were able to obtain an exact solution. We use the same procedure for other problems that are more complicated, but you can see that the solutions will get complicated for anything but very simple geometries. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.